Hello. Luna's going to hop on in a second, and we're going to get started. Juliana. I just, I like Luna. <laughs> Peace, everybody. Zoha. Hey, beautiful. Hi. How are you? <laughs> you can call me Luna. Everyone okay. calls me Luna. <laughs> I was like, Luna's going to call. I mean, Junia. <laughs> I, I love your name. It's like a song. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. When you say my full name, like Nigerian, Brazilian, and all of the names that I have, it really sounds like a song. It's like, <laughs> Oshu Yemisi Juliana Luna Jimoda. It's like, la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, so y'all, Luna is gracing us with her presence, and she is in Brazil, yes. right? Uh-huh, so yeah different time zones but we making it work <laughs> definitely right and um we're gonna start um trying to let a little few more people come in the room but um we're gonna get started by letting juliana luna tell us who she is and what she does because um i don't know if any of you know and she's amazing so thank whenever. you <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you. First, uh, first of all, thank you so much for allowing me into this space and uh, this beautiful, you know, uh, uh, holding crystal, because you're the crystal <laughs> yogi uh, of attention and love and support. Uh, my friend, um, Ananda Oshunla De Free, she is you know, your best friend. And <laughs> to me, I'm like, I'm so good. I'm so grateful to, to be taken in, you know, into the family. And it really makes me feel supported. So thank you. Thank you so much. I'm humbled. Um, best baseball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and well, a little bit about me. I am Brazilian. I'm of Brazilian descent. I was born in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, but I do, I live in New York City. I'm in Brazil right now because of the holidays. I came to spend some time with my family after, um, you know, having, I haven't seen my family in a while. Ah, Ananda is here. She's commenting. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. I love you too. <laughs> You know, and a lot of um, my work uh, revolves around cultivating space for ancestral technology to be um, in people's lives, like on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, I came up with my own um, methodology that really allows, gives people a tool to connect to their ancestral energy, wisdom, whatever you want to name it, right? And it's based on the movement of the moon. Our ancestors, you know, my ancestors, uh, I, I took a Yoruba, um, I took a DNA test that took me um, back into my Yoruba roots. My ancestors, um, you know, took me back into the motherland, not only through knowing that I am Yoruba, but um, physically <laughs> dislocating me from Brazil and going into, you know, that beautiful land that is um, Nigeria. And I felt, you know, that was back in 2015. I felt so much information just like mm. flushing through me. And I could not understand at the time what that information really meant. Right. But as time, you know, developed, I was like, oh, so this is a new perspective that they're showing me. They're really opening up my entire like mental screen to show me that there's another way of being. And that way of being is disconnected from this colonial uh, 
really oppressive ways that have been kind of suffocating me. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, there's a, an alternative uh, expression, which is another time, another time in another mm -hmm. kind of like space, right? Right. Right, right, yeah. So that's where the lunar time comes in because the lunar time is the cyclical time. It's not the linear time, right. right? Right, And through that linearity that we've been so, like, indoctrinated into, we kind of lose touch with our remembrance, with who we are uh, uh, from a soul perspective, from an essential, essential perspective, um, so the cyclicality of the moon is like always revisiting the past, but from a place of, of, of centeredness, it's like, okay, you honor the past and then you move forward because the past has, has put you here in the present moment and you right. are given a full chance, a full opportunity to create a new future. So that's what I teach people. I teach people how to connect with, hey, Jay. <laughs> I teach people how to connect with their essential selves through this framework. It's a framework for self-development based on lunar time and space. Mm. Yeah. Say, <laughs> we do very similar work. Um, <laughs> when I Some are people. Yeah, I was like, okay, so I use, <laughs> I use trauma timeline to go back into the, to create a timeline for yourself to heal and move forward and use the lunar cycles, which connect you to your ancestral roots as a timeline, which is time travel. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Um, to heal the present. I share. So, <laughs> I did when I realized that we almost do the same thing, except we do it from two different perspectives. Yeah. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to teach people about this because our limited mind has been so conditioned into this like okay I gotta go therapy I gotta go you know uh, uh yoga right. I gotta do meditation it's like the healing path it's a very hard one and right. no it's actually the opposite right the trauma that we've been conditioned to is 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 holding us back from experiencing right. all the beauty and all the magic that life has available <laughs> for us. <laughs> oh my god! Where's the tribal music? <laughs> Someone said Twilight music comes on. It's like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause like oh, and you know Ananda had to remind me last night that she was like, remember everybody doesn't do this. Like everybody doesn't like this everybody isn't doing like in my head I'm like this is so easy because I do it all the time I'm like daily why, why it's daily <laughs> it's daily work right right it's not something that's just gonna be like snatched out of your expression of, of self it's like oh I actually was born with all this stuff but all I choose I choose every single day to like chip at it one day at a time and I have the space I have the chance because my ancestors love me so much they they are teaching me the way they're like I, here baby right go this way okay now turn a little bit this way uh oh stop okay now you can go again you know it's like yeah we're supported yeah. we're not alone we're not alone right like yeah we have so much help right and you know because of the trauma we think it's we, we, especially here in, in black, as black Americans in America, we tend to think of our, um, our families because they don't look like, um, white censored families that they're not well. Yes. They have things that they have to work out. We all have things that we have to work through, but you're the, the like you said, the gaze that we look at it through, which is the colonization gaze, it distorts completely. Our, our, magic it distorts all the things that we've been passed that have been passed on to us because we're looking at it through a lens that is not our own right so yeah it's child you girl so, <laughs> <laughs> um i get so, excited i know right i'm like i, I feel like you answered my first question
question. Like I was going to say, what brought you to healing? But that was like all of that. <laughs> <laughs> all of that. <laughs> all of that. <laughs> um, so I'm going to ask something a little, actually, can you go further into why you choose, why the moon, why it spoke to you? Yeah. Yes, I can. <laughs> When since I've I've been a child, Juliana Luna is actually my name, my bit, my birth name. Yeah, and Luna, and for those who don't know, in, in it's the Latin root for moon. So, um, lunatics comes from that place of uh, uh, of colonial perspective, telling labeling people as off, as completely like mentally uh, ill right someone that has is is trusting too much in the unknown is connected to that unknownness and it's like out of the materiality so it doesn't have any value in society so some if someone wants to like curse at you they're like oh you're a lunatic it's like next time someone calls you a lunatic say thank you yes because <laughs> you know it's it's your connection to that unknownness that is spirit but wow. anyways so um it's in my name and since I'm very young I had this really interesting relationship to the moon where I had a, a little notebook one of those little moleskin notebooks and I would like the, the pocket ones and I would write in them every moon I would feel strange I'd be like wait something is weird and then I'll look up and there's a full moon and I'm like oh that's why Right. I, the moon had direct um, um, effect on me. Mm. So I started writing in this little um, book how I felt in this notebook. And I would be like, oh, dear moon, I would write it as a letter to the moon. Dear moon, today I feel like this. It's weird. I don't know what it's like, you know, coming up, but I'm observing it. And when I do, I feel like my body is like vibrating and I would write all these different sensations that I was feeling in my body and in my emotional self. Right. And then at the end of that, I would be like, and I would like to feel joy and I would like to feel mm -hmm. comfortable within myself. And I also need uh, in the material world, I need a new phone because my phone is like almost <laughs> breaking. And I would just like literally make lists like that. And it was so interesting because when I closed that notebook in the next moon cycle, I would open it back up mm. and I would see all of those things that I was actually asking for being manifested in my life <laughs> to the point that I actually, when I said that I needed a phone, I was specific. I said, I need an, I, I had an iPhone four at the time. Imagine this is like, <laughs> right. We are on 12 people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was back in the day. And I was like, I, the, the, la the latest one was the iPhone 6S. I wrote it down. I said, I need an iPhone 6S because mine is about to die. And I can't like work without a phone. And right. I don't have the means to pay all this money because I was at the time traveling and doing all this stuff. I don't have the means to pay for this phone. So cool. Whatever. Moved on. Uh, like a full um, lunation later, I was invited to an event by a brand. And I get to this event, it was by, uh, um, it was on uh, the preparation for World Cup, if I don't, if I'm not mistaken, or for Olympics, I don't remember. And I get it, this is an event uh, that Nike was putting on. And I worked with Nike and all of that stuff. So I went to the event. And I get there, there's all this amazing stuff happening and they're like showing us all this really nice clothes and shoes and whatever and, and sh sneakers. And then they're like, oh, and you have to go into this room here because this is like a secret collection that we're making, but you can't take pictures of it. So you have to leave your phone on the table. Wow. And I was like, okay, weird, but cool, right? So <laughs> all of us that were in the group left our phones on the table and we went into this little room and we saw this whole thing happening there with like super high tech clothing for athletes and shit. And then we came out. And when we come out, that same table where we left our phones, there was a brand new iPhone 6S sitting there in the table. <laughs> and I was like, 
I started crying. My friends are like, why are you crying? Are you crazy? I'm like, you guys don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally, I'm at a Nike event. No one, like, there's no way I'm going right. to get a, a brand new phone at a sports brand event. Like, I, if I was, like, a tech event or whatever, cool. Right. Yeah, right. But literally, and I'm sitting there with this brand new six, iPhone 6 in front of me, 6S, and ev- everyone was like, whoa. And me, I'm like, okay, I, I see. I see what you're trying to tell me, right? right? There's power in this. It's not about the phone at all. It's right. not about the, the fact that the phone was there or the manifestation of it. It's the possibility. Right. It's right. about the possibility and how connected I am to the fact that I believe that that possibility is there for me. Mm. And out of a completely random situation, something that I really need that will support me in my development of my work, of who I am as an individual in the material world right. will show up. Right. So I was like blown away by that. I said, whoa. <laughs> so like <laughs> craziness. So since then, you know, I've been in this like quest to understand lunar uh, uh, relating. It's a relationship, right? And she's been teaching me so much. In every moment of my life that I needed support, she was just bright in the sky, showing me that there's a path that I can actually walk upon. And then later on, when I went to Nigeria, you know, in 2015 and all of that, I learned that my ancestors oriented themselves through the moon. Every single ritual that is done. Every, yeah, if a person is born, they're like, okay, which moon was this person born in? Okay, that's going to be your, your, the day that you're born, whatever moon you were born in, it's going to be the most powerful day of your, of your entire existence. So every day that that moon is in the sky, you can connect to that again because it reminds you of that moment of you dropping into this material, uh, uh, you know, ex- expression. Yeah, into this experience, right. Exactly. Yeah. So I was like, wow, this is in- incredible because my connection to the moon is now backed by this whole ancestral understanding that the moon is actually there to support us in our, in the development of our evol- evolved beingness, beingness. Right. And that that's same when your ancestors were there. Like, exactly. All that- coming through all coming together <laughs> and i'm like whoa all the timelines are like like aligning that's right let's collapse them <laughs> yeah and so i was like okay cool i, I get this this is amazing and I-, I feel it in me but because i live this way all the people around me were like so what's up you know how can you how are you manifesting all this abundance in your life you literally like what do you do people would ask me this all the time what do you do what do you do and I'm like um it, I had a hard time actually defining myself right mm-hmm. and when I finally said to myself okay how can I define this me how can I define me to other people right I asked the ancestors I was like you have to help me remember because I don't, I don't want to say just, Oh, I'm Luna. Uh, I work with fashion. I, I work in fashion. Oh, I'm Luna. I work in education. Oh, I'm Luna. I work in culture. No, I want to really say the words that will remind me of the power of my mission in this world at right. every, every time I actually say it. Right. Um, so they, they, they gave me that. They said, okay, that's going to be the, you know, that's going to be the imprint that we're going to show you. You're going to, we're going to give you a full framework. Yes. Remember to remember it. My, my friend Brooke is there. Mm-hmm. It's the reminder to remember, right? This is the imprint. This is the, the framework. Take it. And now you can, every day you can look at it and say, okay, I remember. And that's how I introduce myself right? I am someone that helps people remember their wow. essential selves. Nice. Nice. Wow. Man. <laughs> so uh, the, the talk name is uh, uh, Inner Power and Spiritual Agency. What made you um, connect those two things um, 
and why okay i'm gonna go with the first question and I'm stop. <laughs> okay <laughs> what made me remember those what, two things yeah, yeah like what um made you say huh huh because a lot of times i don't think people would connect in a like even though and i think that goes together like but i don't think people would connect spiritual agency with their inner power they would right. think most people think their spiritual agency is outside of them right well that's the thing about um this journey i realized that you know before i also thought spiritual agency was outside of me mm -hmm. but once i connected to that inner power of like tr trusting and i had someone that defined this really well for me because this person has been working with me for i would say um like a year now Mm -hmm. and her name is Kelly mm -hmm. and Kelly comes to every class she like had one-on-ones with me like she's really devoted to her transformation and her and her remembering so she she called me the other day she was like Luna I said what's up she's like I had this rebirth moment and I was like what do you mean she said I understand now. I said, how? How do you understand? She said, I was in my, in my prayer moment, my meditation moment with myself, and I felt this thunder inside of me. And the thunder felt like a blooming of, of a flower in my chest. And that flower was just blooming and blooming all over again and again and again and again. And the layers of that flower just kept on blooming. And I felt this really warm feeling and trust inside of me. And when I came out of that experience, everything changed. It's like I walk in trust. There's no separation between me and the, and the, the, the remembrance part. It's like remembering, it's, it's being in, in my body. It's, it's being embodied. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And she said, I understand you now. I said, thank you. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> because it's, it's not easy to kind of like tell people this is what's going to happen, right? It's, it's, a, it's an individual journey. And the more you are uh, keen to, to get into your, your own experience, the more you will discover things. Right. So... This is why inner power and spiritual agency are connected to me because the more, the more you are uh, in that quest for remembrance and you allow that remembrance to guide you. And I can't tell you, I can't be like, here, take this crystal or take this other thing right. or take this other right. course, right? I only right. give you right. tools that work for me. I'm like, look, I have this, this crystals here that I use in a specific manner. I have this other thing here <clears throat> that I use on a specific day. But I'm going to teach you how to connect with your inner guidance. And your mm -hmm. inner guidance is going to choose which one of those tools it will use at, at whatever time you need. Right. right? So it's a, it's a highly individual exp experience. So right. inner power and spiritual agency are connected in that way. It's like your individual experience depends on how much you are connected to that inner power. And then your spiritual agency comes from exercising that every day in your life. And, and then you kind of like take away the responsibility that you delegated to all these people outside of you, the gurus, the saints, the whatever, whatever people are out there, right? Right, and, right. And you, you bring it back to you and say, I'm fully responsible for my experience here. And I'm going to make it a, an amazing ride. And I'm going to have the most fun and the most pleasure in it. Right? So that's spiritual yeah. agency. Right, right. And so you just answered my other questions. I was going to say, how does a person know they're in their spiritual agency? And you just yeah. went right into it. <laughs> I'm reading your paper. <laughs> My eyes are there. Shortest interview ever. <laughs> You're funny. 
Um, the, the next thing I was going to ask you, other than that, um, is because I, when I'm doing work with, I mostly work with women because I have not found a way to work with men where they don't see me as sexual. Mm. I, approach me. Oh, you're going to see me as sexual because it's the dynamic, but approach me in that way, like as a, mm -hmm. not as a and keep it in that way. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, <laughs> I do. <laughs> I kind of don't even go. <laughs> Child. <laughs> the dynamic. We're still, working, we're still working on that. We're still working on that. Because I understand. Um, I was explaining this to someone. It was Because they was like, I look at your comments. And I get so angry. How do people say the things they say? And I'm like, I am presenting something they don't know how to accept for themselves. Mm. So they are trying to figure out a way to interpret it. And sometimes it comes out a little <laughs> off. <laughs> Can't do anything about that. But how do you explain to, because you kind of explained a little bit how, you know, the difficulty is transferring that knowledge that you are like literally embodying and walking around with and allowing somebody else to flower in their own space without leaning on you to the point where they feel like, if I don't do it the way you do it, it's not going to work out. Or I don't, mm -hmm. you know, like they're just so attached to the idea of you in their head and what they see you creating and wanting that same thing on some level, but not wanting to take agency in their own space. How do you support people who need that extra push to take their agency in their own space? Well, I would say, you know, right now we I have a, a full um, curriculum of experiences and journeys that I teach and I ask people to come uh, embark on the journeys with me. Mm -hmm. um, I offer a series of, of workshops that are either four weeks long, one week long. Right now we have one with... Um, Amanda Oshunla de Free, Sweet weir Weirdness, she's here with us uh, in the digital matrix. <laughs> um, she, her and I, we are coming together because we realized, you know, after my last class, we, we had the Aluna Method uh, live experience. And in that class, Ananda and I uh, taught, Ananda taught a class in, in the course. And when she came over, people in the course were like, whoa, like, this is powerful. This woman carries all this power within her. And of course, you know, she's connected to that very beautiful Oshun energy that Mami Wata, she carries that in such a, a regal way that people were like, wait, where can I get more of that, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, and also Oni was there, teaching it also a class and Oni same thing like she carries right. that just like regal ass energy so when people come in contact with that they're like I want more and they right. go like they go right into you know DMing and messaging and being like hey I want to work more with you blah 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 Oni told me once she's like I actually tell people to go first digest what they just <laughs> uh, received and then they come back to me because you know it's easier otherwise people's nervous system get completely hijacked and overwhelmed mm -hmm. and then ananda on the other hand was like I, she felt the same she's like you y'all just had all this stuff that you need to now digest how about you know me and luna come together so she calls me she's like luna i need to talk to you about this i said what's up she said oh I had a, I had this, uh, this idea of teaching people how to like have the tools to clean, cleanse themselves, to ground themselves, to really find that place of, of sovereignty within that spiritual space so they can actually understand, oh, I have a lot of stuff to digest. I have right. something to, I, I need to take this time away from all of the things. I don't want to go back into like that mode of, of overwhelming myself, overwhelming my system 
and even within within the spiritual community this is very common right people are just like eating everything they can literally like right. stuffing their mouth and then all of a sudden not, none of that can actually be properly you know there's Re-digest. there's a process yeah there's right. a process of digestion there so Ananda was like, why do, what if we teach a course together and we like give people the tools so they can actually stand in their in that realization that they have the spiritual agency. They don't have to come to you or to me or to Oni or to anyone. They can mm-hmm. actually sit with themselves, ask the questions, trust that they will be answered and, and be connected to what the answers feel like, sound like, taste like, look like right and and use all of their senses their perception to center themselves in the in the experience and they can move with much more clarity from there i was like yes this is how our ancestors moved right there was a certain right. Uh, right. uh there was a certain like there was such a, a sense of sovereignty and the the elder was in the village to like resolve the things that like just got completely out of hand Right, but right. everyone in the community was responsible for their own development. Right. And if one person was off, it trickled into everyone being off. <laughs> so the elder was like, come here, right. patient zero, come here. <laughs> you need to fix something. And then, you know, that process would be done. But everybody had that sovereignty so i think that's also part of the remembrance right how can we become Mm -hmm. aware of okay i have the tools within me i just have to learn how to tune in and and Mm -hmm. and decode what those tools are just so i can use them in my favor so that's how i i like to work some people work in a different way they're like oh come back every 10 days every week come back come back come back i'll keep giving you little bits of things here and there and then you will always have to come back that's (laughs) fine (laughs) whatever people are doing people are doing (laughs) yeah i'm definitely of the mind i'm gonna give you these tools i'm gonna help you figure out what works for you and good luck (laughs) go on your way baby girl (laughs) a lot of to do that type of work with people for a long period of time like you know over time and woo <laughs> you need to know we need to know how to how to replenish yeah, ourselves it's, back. It's, a, it's it's a lot and people don't yeah yeah yes 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 and that's a, how to tell people when i take you on you're in my space you're, we are energetically connected now, like, period. So, like, I have to check in when you're not showing up in a certain kind of way. I have to check in on myself and say, okay, where is this behavior prevalent in your life that you are annoyed with from this client? <laughs> like, you know, where do you show up like this? Where are you all over the place? Where are you not listening? Where are you hard to uh, take direction? You know, like, all of that shows up. You know, you're only attracting yourselves when you're doing this work, you know, over and over again. And I wanted to know what inspires you, what keeps you inspired to show up and maintain it? Because like I, we just said, it's a lot of work to um, embark on. <clears throat> yeah. Well, what keeps me inspired is the support of my my community, for sure. Like, sometimes I get, like, so uh how do you call this um in my own in my own head about it because i'm like i don't know if people really understand how all of this can be fixed if we only <laughs> took the responsibility for it like mm. and i get so upset because i'm like i'm working so the liberation so the the agency so the decolonization can be out in the world but i'm also like damn come (laughs) on people let's get like let's get it popping you know stop sleeping y'all let's go 
Right. Um, so my my community is like they pick me up. Ananda is one of those people. She like calls, she checks on me. She's like, "Are you good? What's going on? Hey, I'm here. I love you. You know, I, count on me." And that is to me that it's like, wow, this is such a a privilege, right? A, in in a in a blessing to have people that are there in for, in like forms that are like so tangible even though you're not physically in the same place you know i've never even like met ananda in person like mm-hmm. we've been mm-hmm. friends in this That's digital matrix real life. <laughs> right right so there's right. A, an aspect right. of okay yeah. i know i can She's trust this person oh. yeah yeah, yeah. There's a there's that like I know I can trust this person I know this person really is is uh, uh, connected to me in in a at a soul level and then there's the people in my life that you know I cultivated those relationships that cultivated that keep me you know uh, keep uh, supporting me Jessica Wrestler she's someone that I you know I love so much and she's like a badass in business and she's like. If you need any help here, these are my resources. This is this, this is that. I will help you with, you know, she helps me put my my business mind together. I have mm-hmm. people that are connected to me from a spiritual level and they, you know, support me in getting like healing, like energy work and all of that. So I have a network of people that are that are always there supporting me and that's how I draw inspiration. But also I draw inspiration from the, you know, my, my ancestors, the way they've been taking care of me and putting all these amazing people in my life and setting me up for success, <laughs> right. Right. setting me up to, to receive, you know, the love and the, and the abundance that I, that I am. So I've been just very, very grateful for all of that. And that inspires me a lot. You said something just now um, that always surprises people when I tell them that, that teachers, uh, spiritual leaders, healers, whatever you want to call yourself in this day and age, because we have so many names, <laughs> need uh, teachers, need healing. Um, and how important that is. Can you talk a little bit more about how important it is to be spiritually clean um, and have yes. one that holds you responsible as well? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, in the course that me and Ananda will uh, teach next, it actually starts ne- next week, which is amazing. Okay. If, yeah. if y'all want to come through, come through. It's we have all the information in our social media channels. Me, I have the link in bio. It's the Aluna Method um, dot com slash spiritual toolbox. Uh, but and I'll basic... post it in my stories so people can link to it as well. Thank you so much, so Um Well, this is something me and Ananda have talked to like with one another a lot. It's like how do we get back into that place of centeredness ananda has shared with me her practices right she has her shrines at home she's she has uh her her practices from the yoruba tradition that are very much about doing uh living a life with of good character and doing things in an um in a way that really inspires you know balance inspires nurturing inspires all of the things that we are looking for outside of us right so one way of replenishing is that it's communing with your spiritual family with your ancestors with your orishas with your odi which is your 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 head your crown right the Mm -hmm. the guide the primordial guide Mm -hmm. in your experience it's it's right here your your own odi right uh, and creating a relationship with those, um, because I am also, you know, someone that follows your spirituality. So uh, creating a, um, a relationship with those um, spirit spirits that are in your life supporting you. That's one. And then the second one is 
when you actually uh, need, you know, acupuncture done, because let's talk about technology, right? Our bodies are a, a technological uh, 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 vessel. <laughs> right. So whenever something is off in your body, that means that that started in your energy field, in your right. emotional field. If it's right. resonating right here in a, in a way that is, you know, bringing up dis disease, that means that you're not at ease in your mm -hmm. energy field. So creating that channel right. of recognition through taking care of your body, right? Going to therapies, mm -hmm. therapists that are, that are going to allow those energy channels to unblock and, and that blood flow to clear out that inflammation and in whatever area you are experiencing challenges. Um, that is also spiritual work. We don't understand right. things that way, right? We're like, oh, uh, yeah, my body, no, my energy, no, my emotions. It's like, no, it's all one thing. So, right, right. <laughs> so, you know, taking care of your body, taking care, going to, uh, uh, doing cleansed, cleansing, uh, taking a week off from social media, like, or more if you need, or less if you need, you know, all of that is connected to replenishing energy, to healing, and to, and it's important for us teachers to, to go through those processes, like, I, I, for example, I took ayahuasca this year. I took it once. And, and that's one of my um, practices that I, that I have to reset myself and to, you know, come back into a place of like. How that was. Huh? We got to talk because I want to know how that was. Oh, uh, yeah. I will definitely tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that's so all of that. You, <laughs> huh? Is it a delay? Yeah, a little bit. What did you say? Oh, I was just saying, um, I want to do it, but you know it's illegal here. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. <laughs> that part. <laughs> well, because I live in, you know, close to the Amazon right. in Brazil, and there's a lot of indigenous um, tribes here that are, their practices, their ancestral practices are connected to plant medicine. Um, it's easier right. in, in, in this land, in this side right. of the world to, to get that. Also, it's important to have in mind that this has to be facilitated by people that are really, that really know what they're doing, because this is, you know, right. it's, it's really deep ancestral work. So you can't just like take it and think, oh, yeah, this is something I'm taking for healing. It's not a as black and white it's it's there's a lot of layers there and and i think people in the united states kind of have to understand that too right that it has an actual um culture that is connected mm -hmm. yeah right yeah um ma pode trazer um pouco d'água para mim por favor i asked I my mom want to just talk more about what you and Ananda are doing again just so everyone can know what it is that's coming up next for you and how they can get to it um yeah <laughs> <clears throat> okay um me and Ananda will be together next week we start a one week intensive it's going to be three classes we're going to share it's going to be two hour classes so we're going to share time and within those two hours but we will basically be teaching um, uh, intuition, like how to connect to, to that intuition. How do you understand what language your intuition is talking to you and, and, the, and, and how to piece that information together, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be talking about uh, grounding, grounding work, protection work. Obrigada, mãe. Protection work, which is uh, how do you like understand how to cleanse your, yourself, your energy field, come back into your centeredness and cleanse your home, you, you know, your environment. Uh, a lot of people have been feeling drained from Zoom calls and meetings and all of that. 
and they don't really know what is happening, which is really interesting. <laughs> but, you know, and also relationships that we have that when are in that, you know, place of imbalance, they take from us. And we're like, oh, why do I, why did I get so sleepy when I was just talking to my friend? Or how did I get so tired when I was just like sitting out here in the park, right? And someone was sitting close to me. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, this is just ways of learning how our energies can be taken and people will take it if you're not aware of that. So we're going to teach people how to like, you know, hold a container right. and find groundedness within that container. And then the third thing that we will be talking about is the, the path of good character, right? Like how do you maintain that spiritual hygiene? It's like the more you are connected to that path of the heart and, and you know, when, uh, and you walk in that path, we become that embodied, embodied presence of light and love. So... Can you run that back? Froze up a little bit. Yeah, did I freeze? At the beginning, the beginning, good character. Okay, so once you walk in that path of good character, you become the embodiment of that light and that love that you are uh, uh, accessing through all of this knowledge. So that is a way to be to to keep yourself in it, like in that cleansed uh, environment, right? You are constantly renewing yourself energetically and that constantly is giving you the opportunity to walk this earth with purpose um so that's also something we're going to be teaching around um that is that is basically the content of the classes and starting on the 14th which is monday and it's a new moon so if you you know people are like oh the new moon is for planting the seeds and and uh, intentions right if you want to plant a, a seed of intention for your spiritual agency <laughs> we are here join us you can go to my bio or to ananda's bio or zoha you you said also you will post it in your um it's your stories um and yeah join us like we had so many people come through and leave completely renewed we have so many of those people coming back and back and back to the classes just because they want to be present and learn more so yeah i'm so happy to be living in my purpose <laughs> i had one question that i forgot to ask because i know we're gonna have to hop out off of here because ig will just... oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and it was uh spiritual um, connection to because you and I have a lot in common around our expression of our intimate selves and I thought wow you know I used to poll but I can't get it up in this apartment for some reason <laughs> so I was like look at her on her poll I missed that poll <laughs> I missed so that how do so you um, connect your to your um, intimate sensual self and um make uh, uh, peace with that. Because a lot of people have a hard time merging those two because they think they're separate. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say, you know, wellness and sexuality walk hand in hand, hand in hand together. Because sexuality is healing, right? Once you heal those layers of trauma in your sexual experience you start to be to become one with the creative force of life itself right so right. sensuality you know uh, uh eroticism all of that is a very um just a very like taboo kind of like you know experience that we have in society today because it actually shows how much power we have right mm. the more mm. we tap into that erotic self the more powerful we become so society is like don't go there right. that is not allowed 
blah, blah, blah. And I'm not talking about like uh, uh, this thing that people do that is an, a very interesting thing where that becomes a, um, uh, how do you call this? Um, almost like as if people are taking from you by performing this whole, you know, whatever it is that sensuality means for them. It's actually embodying that, living that in everything. Like I see that you do that a lot. Like you, you live that through your yoga practice. You live that through your partner, uh, you know, interactions with your family, with, you know, your life becomes full of eroticism because right. it's just, present it's not like you can turn it on and off <laughs> right right it's it's there and you yeah. bask into that energy right it's like ooh, i feel it, it it helps me create like that's where my manifestation energy comes from that's where i get what i want comes from why would i turn that off <laughs> exactly it's power it's yeah. it really is power so the right. more you tap into it you know so this is how i live my life and people I have had a lot of uh, uh, trouble around that in the past because, you know, women would come around me and be like, oh, she's flirting with blah, 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 my man. And I'm like, I'm not flirting. I'm really just so excited in this body of mine that it translates as this like right. freedom right. and it's free. And people look at me and they're like, oh, that freedom, that is the devil's work. <laughs> And me, I'm like, no, come here, experience this with me. <laughs> and right. like, it experience becomes all, yeah, come, come, <laughs> you know, come. Um, so it's like, it, be, it I, ha you know, I had to make peace with it. As you said, I had to come to terms with it and be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to live this way. And it's okay because everything in me resonates oh, that, you. vibrates that. Can you hear me? Can you? Uh oh. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it was, did I it did was, I cut off? Yeah, it was just like a little uh, choppy, but you got the 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 meat of it, like really. Um, so yeah. normally <laughs> at the end of these, I do something called this or that. Okay. So I'm going to give you two choices and you choose which one and you okay. say why you choose that thing. Okay? All right. Okay. All right. So the book or the movie? The book. <laughs> <laughs> Such a hard one. The book. Why? Because then I can imagine, imagine it in my mind the movie gives me the the optics of it but the 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 words allow my brain to to work in a different way so i imagine what those words are bringing up for me good i got aim um <laughs> <laughs> all right so this is an argument that my family and i have all the time pie or cake <gasps> <laughs> oh my god no that's a hard one ah uh, cake 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 <laughs> why cake because it's fluffy and my mom makes the best cake in the world so i love eating cake she hasn't made me one yet i'm looking at her right now <laughs> like got my eyes on you <laughs> Mom, make me cake, please. <laughs> she just like, she looked at me like, <laughs> like not even talking to me. <laughs> yes, three, cake. And all right, this one is going to be the last one, but it's the word or the deed. Oy. <laughs> well. Through your philosophy, we talk about ofa, which is our word. And our word is incantation. Whenever, you know, you say a word, it means that you are bringing something to life. So I would say the word, but with that context, right? Mm -hmm. Not like the word because it's 
spoken, but the word right. because it it's an incantation. It's something that comes from my soul into existence, and therefore it breathes life. Right, right, right. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Luna, thank you so Hi. much for joining us. Um, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to try to figure out how to send this to you. I don't know how I can do that. Either I'll download it and put it on YouTube and send you the link or something like that. Somehow I'll get this to you. <laughs> do you do you normally put that though the lives on IGTV? Do you yes, do I, that? Yes. You, if you do that, then I can try to share it somehow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I appreciate you. Have a Thank you. Thank you so much okay. for this space. <laughs> Thank you for. <laughs> bye. 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 Everyone. Y'all don't forget to page and check out the Luna Method and sign up for class. Come on, guys. Please. Sign up. <laughs> All right. Peace. Bye, Zoha. Thank you. <laughs>